Welcome to Bits and Pieces Quilting. Today I want to share with you another original pattern for the Fibonacci sequence. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Michelle, and today I want to share with you a pattern for this quilt here. It's called the Fibonacci sequence. And if you saw my video, video on the Fibonacci spiral, you will know that Fibonacci is the name given to a 12th century mathematician who came up with the Fibonacci sequence. It's a famous series of numbers that starts at zero and then goes to one, and then the sequence is created by adding the previous number with the current number. So zero plus one is one, one plus one is two, two plus one is three, three plus two is five, 5 plus 3 is 8, and so on. And so I used that sequence to inspire this quilt here behind me. If we start over at the edge, I use this blank space to represent the zero, and then we have a one inch strip, another one inch strip, which when added together become a two inch strip. Two inches plus one inch is three inches, three plus two is a five inch section, five plus three is an eight inch section, and then eight plus five is 13. And that makes up the entire sequence across this project. It's been an amazing stash buster. As you can see, I've just thrown everything into this. This is all just a series of strips sewn together in random sizes. And then I added a scrappy border to it as well. So it may look a little chaotic, but there is actually some method to the madness. I think this project would also look great in a couple of other colorways. And as we dive into the video, I'll show you what else you could do with this pattern. The pattern is available on my website at www.bitsandpiecesquilting, and I hope you'll join me in making the Fibonacci sequence. For this scrappy version of the Fibonacci sequence, I went through my scraps and I pulled out all of the fabrics in that warm and cozy colorway. I didn't select bright brights, I didn't select pastels, but everything sort of had that warm and cozy feel to it. And I started at the far right hand side of the quilt with the 13 inch strip. So I roughly cut my strip pieces into about 15 inch pieces and then started to just randomly sew them together. I wasn't concerned at all about the width of the, the strips. I just wanted to make sure that there was enough variety and just sewed them all together until I had a very long strip set that was slightly longer than the final size that I was looking for. And if you look at the pattern, you'll see that that's 63 inches. So with all of those strips set together and pressed, I then took it over to the cutting board, the cutting table, folded it up very nicely, very straight, made sure that my seams were all perpendicular to each other, trimmed off one side, and then measured across 13 inches. And so that became my first strip set. Then I continued to sew strips together, again, measuring about 15 inches, and again, didn't worry about the size, the width, and then from there, cut the eight inch strip and the three inch strip. And then carried on with that same process until I had all the strips I needed. Two one inch strips, which I should have clarified here. Those are the finished sizes. The pattern will tell you all of this, but the 13 inch strip was cut at 13 and a half inches to allow for seam allowance. The eight inch strip at eight and a half, and so on. So in the end, I had two strips that were one and a half inches wide, a strip that was two and a half inches wide, three and a half, five and a half, eight and a half, and 13 and a half inches wide. Once the strip sets were all cut, the next step was to cut background fabric. So again, the pattern will tell you the number of strips that you need and the widths to cut them, but you sew those background strips together, measure them out to 63 inches, so that your background strips get interspersed with your scrappy strips. It's really just a matter of cutting to the right length, measuring very carefully, pinning or clipping your strips of 
scrappy fabric together with your background strips and sewing down that line, carefully pressing and moving on. As I said in the introduction, I think this quilt would look great in a couple of different colorways. And I've done a little um, quilt diagram of a rainbow quilt. This is great if you're looking to make a diversity quilt or to support someone from the LGBT community, or even just for a child with the beautiful bright colors. I think it also has a bit of a modern flair to it, depending on the colorway that you used. So I did another quilt diagram in this beautiful gray color. This is actually the Kona fabric called Shark. And I think it just is so modern and clean and would make a beautiful addition to a really modern home. And then this might also be a great way to work in school colors for a student, a university or a college student. If they have a red and white school theme or a blue and yellow school theme, I think you could do a lot with this pattern. It's quick and easy to put together and I think there's a lot of different options. You can see from the scrappy version that I, once I sewed the, um, the center of the quilt together with the background strips and the pieced strips, I added an outside edge just to frame up the center of the quilt and then a scrappy border that's a version of a piano key border. Because the strips in the middle are all different sizes, I just left that the same for the outer border as well. And then to quilt the final project, I put some random um, free motion quilting designs into some of those strips of fabric. I really like the wishbone design that Angela Walters demonstrates frequently. So I used that across various rows of the quilt and then a free motion meander stitch in the background just to tack it all down. The final product is crazy cozy and warm. I think it's a great stash busting project. It is maybe not a decorator's dream in this scrappy version, but I think there's a lot of opportunity to make this a sleek and elegant product, something perfectly fit for a kid or in any color pattern, any color choice that, that you're interested in. Thanks very much for watching this video on the Fibonacci sequence. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you'll give it a try in whatever colorway inspires you. Leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think. Don't forget to get the pattern from my website. Enjoy the process and make the most of your fabric bits and pieces.